Someone brought up the question recently of, are rim shots bad for your wrists? Now that's a valid question, because after all, when you play a rim shot, you're slamming the stick down on the drum, and there's a lot of energy from that stick potentially going up your arm. So today we'll examine the technique and mechanics of playing a rim shot, and we'll see if we can determine if this drum striking method really could be harmful. Hey everybody, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's jump over to the kit for the rest of the video. So a quick explanation of rim shots. In case you're a beginner and you're not familiar with the terminology, what I'm talking about is hitting the middle of the snare with the tip of the stick, while also hitting the rim of the snare with the shaft of the stick at the same time. The reason why this is an important question and something really worth addressing is because a lot of times when we're playing loudly, if we're playing rock grooves, rock songs, we're playing on a rock gig, or we're playing in a big room, or we're playing outside, we've got to make sure the snare is heard if it's maybe not mic'd and we don't have a sound guy helping boost our levels. And so playing rim shots on every backbeat, on every two and four, can really help that snare to cut through the mix, to cut through past busy, loud, gritty electric guitars. So it's important to have a loud snare sound sometimes when that's necessary. So if you're playing rim shots on maybe a three hour cover gig or a four hour cover gig, you wanna be playing them right. We wanna make sure that we're avoiding injury to our hands. So that's why this is so important and really worth discussing. Now you saw in the thumbnail that reference to carpal tunnel. Now without trying to go into medical details here, not that I really know anything about medical details, carpal tunnel results from excessive wrist motion or repetitive wrist motion. So if we're playing drums and our wrists are going like this all the time, that could very easily cause something like that, cause some pressure, some strain, things that we don't wanna deal with. We drummers are obviously guilty of a lot of repetitive wrist motion, and so we want to minimize that repetitive wrist motion as much as possible. So some of the things that can potentially cause carpal tunnel or other types of joint pain as a result of rim shots are when the wrist is moving too much like this or if we're squeezing the stick too tight, or if our wrist is too stiff, so kind of the opposite of extra wrist motion, where either way, a lot of the energy from the stick when the rim shot happens, it's going up our arm, and that's not good. So really, those, those kind of three things can potentially cause the injury, so we wanna avoid those. Now, rather than spend a bunch of time talking about each of these wrong ways to play rim shots, let's just dive into talking about the right way to play a rim shot. So what is the best way to play a rim shot? You guys have heard me mention this all the time on the channel. This is one of my favorite things to talk about because I believe it's really important, and that is to keep your hand loose while you're playing. This applies to when you're playing singles on your pad, when you're keeping time on the ride, when you're moving around the kit. Keep things open and loose. Now when playing rim shots, this can be tricky because in our minds, when we're hitting something hard, we want to you know, put some anger into it sometimes. We want to make sure that we're really controlling the stick and being precise because in order to play a rim shot, you have to be really precise. You've got to land the tip of the stick in the middle of the head at the same time that the shaft hits the rim. And that can be really tough sometimes when you haven't built up the muscle memory, so it's easy to tense up. That's something you got to fight. You got to stay loose, let the stick just be thrown down on the drum. So really to illustrate this, the best way is just to show you some slow-mo footage. We'll watch me playing these loose rim shots and I'll kind of break it down and talk you through what I'm doing. Basically what we're looking for here is for the stick to be moving within your hand. If your hand and your fingers are following every bit of the stick's motion, then we're gonna have that excessive wrist motion that is exactly what we want to avoid. Because if our wrist is having to move like this every time we hit a drum, that's uncomfortable. We wanna keep that wrist relaxed and not move our hands more than we have to in relation to our arms, which is why we wanna keep the hand loose so the stick is moving within the hand so that our hand doesn't have to follow all that motion. That also helps the stick to move according to the laws of physics and just bounce smoothly the way it wants to, which actually helps those rim shots be more consistent. I know that's a little bit counterintuitive because you feel like you've got to control exactly where it hits and make sure it lands just right, but it's gonna be more consistent if you learn to loosely throw it down on the drum. Because if you can put less effort into it and let the laws of physics take over, then you're more likely to have a smooth, effortless kind of rim shot that's not gonna wear you out after a four hour gig. Now when the stick is moving within your hand like that, uh, yeah, there's gonna be some friction on your skin. 
and that might cause uh, some blisters. It might hurt a little bit while you're playing, especially after a four hour gig if your hands get sweaty and the stick's rubbing on your thumb and your finger. But surface injuries are fine. Your skin toughens up, you build calluses, you recover. Uh, it's way better to have some blisters on your hand at the end of a four hour gig than to have a bunch of serious pain going on in your joints. That's not good. Another question is how do we practice these? How do we get better at the rim shots? So, okay, I've, I've told you how I play rim shots. So how can you practice this so that you get better at it? Well, back when I first decided to start practicing my rim shots intentionally, when I knew, okay, I need to get better at rim shots, I took a towel, kind of like this one. It wasn't the same towel, but a towel like this one, I set it right here on the snare, turned my snares off, and practiced playing rim shots. Now when you've got it muffled like this and you have the snares turned off, you can clearly hear whether or not you're playing a consistent rim shot. Those inconsistencies really get brought out. But you'll be able to really hear that difference. And so then you can play grooves like that. You can practice playing rim shots at other parts of the drum. Whatever you do as you're practicing them, choose a positioning and a volume and practice doing that consistently because we want to make sure our backbeats are consistently. Our we want to make sure our backbeats are consistent. That's a big thing with playing rim shots. If we're going to play a rim shot backbeat, it needs to sound the same every time. It does just take time. There's no shortcut. If, if there is a shortcut, it's gripping loosely. And if you're doing that, then you're well on your way to playing solid, consistent rim shots. From there, you just have to do it. Repetition, spend a lot of time practicing it, use it on gigs. Eventually the muscle memory develops and you really don't have to think about it too much. Hey, I hope this video helped you out and provided you with some valuable information to incorporate into your practicing and to improve your technique on the drums. If so, I hope you'll share the video and I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.